we will be discussing about different technologies that we should actually know how to utilize those technologies for natural resource management. So, in the previous uh, classes, we have discussed about different tools and techniques that could be used for participatory rural appraisal. But today, we will be discussing about tools and technology which we can actually use practically on the field to manage and maintain our natural resources. So, today's technologies that we will be discussing, it has to do with engineering technologies in relation with soil, water and plant conservation. So, these three are the major natural resources that we need almost in daily basis for our livelihood, for our life, for our basic sustenance of our life. So, I would like to start with the different field based technology that are required for natural resource management. So, in this module I will be also sharing with you some of uh, case studies, some case studies where I myself actually was involved and some other case studies which are very successful in one or other way for managing natural resources. Say for example, uh, the watershed management of Kuti village in Madhya Pradesh. So, if you, if you see that, that particular area were had some problems and issues before these watershed management practices were carried out. What are those problems it had? Less fertile soil, less an uneven rainfall distribution pattern. So, that means you had certain issues with also water and when you have some irregular rainfall, then there is a some kind of scarcity could arise because your rubi crop may get affected, the crop which actually you grow in the winter or dry season. Poor infrastructure, high population density, low literacy rate. So, you see the cocktail of different problems which actually can hinder or reduce the pace of growth of any area. Now, this particular village, the soil type found to be deep medium black soil. Well, as you know that black soil is normally considered as reasonably good soil having high organic matter content, rainfall 110 centimeter approximately and the main river in that area is Utaoli river. And you can see from this uh, picture that how barren is this land, right? So, in such kind of land to grow certain food crops or any other kind of crops could be a very big challenge. So, here a good watershed management could be an efficient way to manage the natural resources here soil, water, plant. Now, if you see that what are the schemes actually were available in that particular area. So, you had National Center for Human Settlements and Environment NCHSE, Rajiv Gandhi Watershed Missions, these are the two main you know schemes that were available and working in that particular area. So, utilizing this kind of government schemes, one can actually carry out the management practices for natural resources. Now, let us see what were the initiatives were taken in that particular area. NCHSE had taken some initiatives, of course, they had gone for participatory rural appraisal. They also constituted watershed committees, they tried to build the confidence and then regular meetings and participation of villagers for planning and implementation of various you know need based implementations of different technology or suppose different type of farming system. So, these are all actually can be utilized for better management of natural resource. Now, let us see what are the development works actually were carried out in that particular area. They constructed two machinery stop dams and repair one complete with gated spillway. They also built two machinery check dams, nine earthen dams, 56 loose boulder structure, tan gavion structure 
about 700 meter of firm bonding also they carried out and these all were carried out under this one scheme. What are the major outcomes of utilizing these schemes for natural resource management through watershed management? First, there was an improvement in the groundwater level and enhanced availability of surface water during post monsoon period because that is the critical period. Once the monsoon goes off, even though you get lot of rain, but if the rain is not stored, then right after monsoon, you might you know face a problem of water for the next crop. All right? So, if your groundwater is recharged, then you have a chance for doing irrigation if it requires. Another outcome, area under irrigation expanded from 46.4 hectare which are owned by 9 farmers to 305 hectares owned by 90 farmers. So, this is a huge jump. So, from 46 hectare it has become now 305 hectare under irrigation whereas, 9 farmers were the beneficiary for irrigation now there are 90 farmers. What is the other major outcome? Cropped area of Kharip and Rabi seasons increased by 57 and 1 85 percent respectively significant jump. So, you see that if a proper management like in this case watershed management practices has been carried out. So, you can basically change the life of, of the poor people at the rural area. So, increase of 57 percent and 185 percent is really something significant and can change the life of those poor farmers. So, these are some data that uh, actually has been taken from that particular case study. You can see that in 1997 for Kharib crop which is mainly based on rainfall, Rabi crop means winter crop. So, if you see that in Kharib crop, so 215 hectare was in 1997 and that has increased to 338 hectare. Total crop production 2150 quintal say roughly around 2000 quintal from there it has increased to 3400 quintal. Crop productivity though remain same because here the area has increased. So, your total production also got increased. If you come to Rabi 1997 there was only 107 hectare of land having total crop production roughly around 1300 quintal. Crop productivity was 12 but see the jump in Rabi crop. 2003 the area increased to 305 hectare and total production gone to 6001 almost 6 times increase and productivity also increased from 12 to 20 quintal per hectare. And this was possible because post monsoon you got good irrigation, post monsoon you got good irrigation why? Because ground water got recharged. Why? Because you had watershed management and watershed management help you basically to restore and manage the water in a better manner. So, your groundwater got recharge. So, when groundwater got recharge, you have the opportunity to in increase your irrigation and that is why productivity also gone increase and of course, production by 6 times. So, this is one case study to show you the importance of you know good or efficient natural resource management here largely the management of water that I have shared with you. Now, look at the land management aspect. Now, we know that saline or sodic soil then if some area has mining activities. So, those areas soil actually loses productivity and it becomes challenging for farmers poor farmers to grow food in that kind of condition literally impossible because soil completely loses its you know fertility. Now, what to do in that kind of condition? So, the study site was Chandan open strip mining project it is in Jharia coal field which is in Jharkhand. Jharia is known for you know coal mining. What is the objective? Objective was to reclaim the coal mine area soil near Jharia. Jharia is a famous Raniganj Jharia is famous coal mine area. So, what are the measures taken? The land were covered by legume and legume enhances 
nitrogen in soil okay through biological nitrogen fixation we call BNF is a natural process because legume has a process a capacity to capture uh, biological nitrogen and thus enhance the soil nitrogen content. Land also were covered by grass. So, these two small measures one is growing legume and one is covering grass simple measure, but that measure also can give you you know significant result and let us see that how these two simple steps have changed that coal mine area of soil. Legumes it play vital role in enhancement of microbial activity, soil fertility as I just said that it has its inherent potential to, to capture nitrogen biologically through nodule in the root system. I will not get into that because that will go in a different topic, but as of now you try to understand that legume plant has a natural capacity to capture nitrogen biologically and thus it helps to enhance the nitrogen content in soil. In soil if you can increase nitrogen, carbon, phosphorus all these nutrient content then definitely soil will be better. If soil is better then your crop that you produce will be better. If crop is better if it, if it contains good nutrient which come from the soil only and then when you eat those food, food crops then we also get good nutrient in the soil. That is why it should be clear in all of our mind that the nutrient in our entire body the sustainability of our health and body system is largely depending on soil because every you know milligram of nutrient that we have in our body it comes from soil because foods are grown in soil. Well, some, some of you might argue with me that uh, I, I also take non-veg, I also take say chicken fine, but if you look at even those chickens also surviving on what grains only. So, that means they are also getting energy from where from grains food grains and those grains are grown again in soil. So, my, my just point is to tell that if you can take care of soil, if you can able to manage the nutrient content of soil, soil will take care of your health because our most of the you know nutrient and energy that we actually derive, we derive from food and those most of the foods come from soil. Indirectly or directly you will find that there is a link with soil, soil nutrient ultimately gets into our body system. Now, legumes planted in top soil significantly improve the physiochemical and biological characteristics of the soil in this case a mining area soil which is I mean you can easily guess that a coal mine area soil will be you know is polluted and not actually suitable for growing crop. But if you grow grass and legume you can actually regulate or reduce the harmful effect on those soil. Legumes can be used to restore coal mining soil and increase the mine soil fertility within a very short period of time. Legumes perform better than grass in coal mine you know land reclamation of this particular study area. It has been found that legume is better than even grass, but even only growing grass can also stop another soil problem that is erosion. So, if you keep the uh, mining soil area barren then definitely there will be much more problem. You will have the issue of, of soil loss if there is strong wind or rain comes in, if your soil is barren then it will take away the top soil right. So, if you put some grass then it can reduce the loss of the soil. Now, let us come to another natural resources that is forest. So, forest management I will share a, another case study about forest management. Sundarban all of you know Royal Bengal tiger it is famous for that is in West Bengal. So, that particular study area had some problem. What are those problem? There the biodiversity is threatened, is threatened because of what? 
reclamation of deltaic island for human use means for our use for our good so this kind of deltaic one island is being reclaimed for human use deforestation for making house or for something some other purpose related to our survival and our well being deforestation takes place so erosion will take place unwanted you know creation then salinity non judicious exploitation of fishes is a big issue there so people actually suppose they fish more than what actually they can consume or they can sell so that's why it's a non judicious exploitation and it could it it actually was observed that in some cases people do fishing so much in extra amount that ultimately neither they can consume neither nor can they sell so ultimately some of the fish actually get rotten so instead of that it is better that you actually do fishing only that much which is required for your consumption and probably for your business floral and other fauna components are also under threat because when you cut trees and clean a island for our for human you know consumption or human uh, need then definitely the flora and fauna of that area will be disturbed ecotourism bio invasion and pollution now ecotourism if it is done in a very technical way in a very sustainable manner it can have both effect tourism plus also ecosystem restoration but if, if it is not done in appropriate manner there is a chance that it could actually you know create the cases of bio invasion and it can also create pollution so you can see that if you go sundarban area some parts of the uh, you will find that lot of plastics and lot of waste material by the tourists are actually dropped there so even though there are notices notification but still still people you know do that and then on top of that as sundarban is you know near bay of bengal and bay of bengal like any other you know seas is under you know some kind of effect by global climate change so these are the problems in hand and let us see that what are the measures were taken in this particular site to maintain various natural resources first income generating activities are permitted in the manipulated region okay such as the collection of black tiger prawns seeds and then cultivation of oysters crabs mushroom cultivation bee capping so all those things income generating activities have been permitted in some pockets of this uh, beautiful part of our country then sundarban biosphere reserve has also been designated as the entire indian sundarban area or south of damper hodges line so that demarcates the inward limit of tidal influence which includes around almost 5400 square kilometer of reclaimed land so several zones have been recognized within this biosphere reserve so to name a few a central zone a central zone which consists of national park and a tiger reserve then a manipulation zone roughly around 2004 square kilometer of mangrove forest then a regeneration zone covering around 240 kilometer square kilometer of degraded forest and saline mud flats and a growth zone containing much of the areas that had been reclaimed so only the core zone only the core zone has you know stringent protection measures in place but rest of the areas are not protected in that manner so the core area as of now is being uh, somehow protected from various uh, negative activities attempts are also being made to rehabilitate some of the degraded areas by planting trees and going for different forestation programs then the estuarian crocodile and the olive red lit turtle which is famous you might have heard about that are somehow gaining some attention among the faunal species so some of the individual and some of the ngos are quite actively working in that area to somehow protect this very beautiful species animal species fauna in that particular area 
A specific sea turtle co conservation program has also been launched by the Sundarban Tiger Reserve in India. So, you see that there are a lot of initiatives or measures have been carried out to take care of this particular uh, place in Sundarban. So, so in this uh, class what I actually wanted to discuss with you is to give you some real case studies through which I wanted to just share with you that, that there are ways, there are means available with us not only technologies but also various government schemes which we can actually utilize to manage our natural resources, land, soil, water, biodiversity. So, these all are possible provided that we have a very smart plan in hand and we need to converge you know various schemes that are operating in different parts of our country and in, in particularly if you consider a single site where you want to focus on, you first need to find out that what are the different you know government schemes are working in that particular area which has some kind of scopes or sign some kind of avenue to take care of natural resources. So, your job would be to leverage that. So, link your plan exercises implementation plan with those you know avenues mentioned in those schemes. Then you must work with the community as well as the other stakeholders like the state government departments, the NGOs and individuals working on the field. Remember only through government effort or initiative managing the natural resources is almost impossible. As a citizen every one of us has also responsibility to take care of this and I am hopeful that looking at these three or four case studies that I have shared with you, I hope you understand that this is possible. We can make it provided again I say that we have a smart plan in hand and we are ready to work with all the stakeholder present in that particular location. So, we will follow up this discussion in the next section of my lecture. Mm -hmm.